Welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Comic Con Studio. I'm Sam Heifel, and I'm joined now by the executive producer and cast of Titans. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> I, I, like, Hello. I looked up and I was like, wow, all right, we're doing this. Um, okay, Greg, I'll start with you because we streamlined a bit in season three, reduced your number of characters a bit. How does that affect season four? Well, you know, Titans, we kill them off and we bring them <laughs> back on. Even if you die, you come back. So, you know. <laughs> We've, we've added some really interesting and dynamic and problematic characters to this season oh. that create a lot of interesting challenges for our team. Yeah. Brenton, how is uh, Nightwing as a leader? He's like Brenton. <laughs> Which means? <laughs> he, he, he wants to be a good leader, but there's always a fatal flaw. Um, yeah. No, I think uh, he's, he's stepping up this season uh, in a big way. I mean, you know, to answer your question before, yeah. The advantage of killing people off is that you get to, you know, bring on new characters to every season. I feel like we've done that every season, right? Yeah. And um, this season is an opportunity for Nightwing to, you know, to, to be the leader that we all know from the comic books. You know, to be the leader that's charismatic and, and lives by a certain morale and, and kind of knows exactly what line he's walking with being a superhero. And um, I think... You know, in terms of managing the Titans, everyone's getting older and, and finding their own identity, and that's great because we're a stronger team, but that comes with its own challenges. So, sure. yeah, it's a whole kind of fresh um, set of challenges for Nightwing this season. Yeah. Um, Ryan, Beast Boy is still learning how to use his powers. What can we expect from him in season four? Uh, I, my go-to word has just been unraveling. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no, yeah. We, uh, you know, it's been three seasons of, of very difficult uh, ups and downs. You yeah. know, he has a he has a good heart, and uh, his kind of his laugh and his charisma get him through. But this season, uh, the traumas kind of resurface, and the unraveling uh, it's actually for his benefit. Mm. So there's a lot of peace found uh, for Garfield this season, and he, yeah, he gets to he gets to be impactful uh, in a way that uh, I think he hasn't really been in, in previous seasons. Does that make your job more fun, getting to play that? I, I, absolutely. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> um, there's one scene in particular, uh, episode eight or so, I can't give any spoilers away, where I got to play an absolute madman. And the, the guest star that I was playing opposite of uh, was not really familiar with, with the tone of the show mm -hmm. and was looking at me like I was... <laughs> You know, uh, explicit, explicit. Yeah. Yeah, lost my mind. Yeah. Is there like an intro speech to new guest stars of like, listen, this is what you're walking into? <laughs> that should be it. Should be, yeah. Our actors are going to lose their mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you okay with that? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. There's a catchphrase. Do you want to give up the catchphrase? New actors coming into the show? Well, I don't know the catchphrase. Oh, no. The classic catchphrase. Uh, yeah. Well, I've taped it up now, you have to say it. Welcome to Titans. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. But it gets the point across. Yeah. Yeah. You have to wait for, like, it's all about the timing of when you use exactly. that. Yeah. Well, what happens right. is when something really goes crazy on our show and goes wrong, and it will a few times a season, where <laughs> something you've never seen before happens, yeah. the look, everybody looks at each other, kind of does this shrug and just goes, Titans. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay. How does the intro of Lex Luthor affect Connor? It affects him profoundly. Yeah. It's something that uh, we've kind of been building up um, since season two. We're kind of tugging back at those story threads back from when Connor was first introduced. You know, sure. we've, we've seen characters like Mercy Graves talk to Lex on the other end of a phone call. We've had a lot of conversa conversations about him. Nightwing, Gar, everyone's been telling Connor who this guy is and now we get to see this guy and we get to see expectation meet reality. And yeah. I don't want to spoil what happens, but... Uh, it's uh, it's interesting. It's Titans. Yeah. <laughs> what made now the time to actually have that? Like like you said, you guys have been bringing it up on the show. Why bring Lex now? Well, getting permission to use oh, sure. some iconic <laughs> characters is like an Elizabethan wedding courting <laughs> ceremony it process. It takes months, if not years, of asking and getting on one's knee and sending gifts. Um, and ultimately, you know, we felt that every character on our show needs to go through a ringer of some sorts. And we're a family show, and a family is always about someone 
having a really hard time in the family and how family could stay together. And it felt at this point we hadn't had for Superboy that kind of story that really challenged him in a way that really forced him to figure out who he was. Mm -hmm. He does have a dual DNA parentage. Yeah. You know, that, that is, that is, uh, uh, has been hinted at being a struggle, but we wanted to kind of put that struggle right front and center this year and have him make some decisions about what this path forward is going to be. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Joseph Morgan, a man who has made a career out of playing wonderful villains. Um, what made him right for, for this season's big bad, if you will? I want to leave that to... I know my choices of why we went in. He's a deeply skilled actor. Yeah. He's passionate and committed. Um, he he changed his body in order to do the job. He did every. He was. I think we all learn good lessons from Joseph. But I didn't have to play against him, or I had the privilege of playing against him. I just <laughs> talked him on the phone and sure. said, "But these guys will have a better answer." Yeah. What's it been like working with Joseph? They have uh, more time with Joseph than I do. Uh, it was just really nice pleasant conversation uh, offset yeah. but we are so opposite in terms of characters <laughs> that putting us in the same room I think would lower the stakes yeah. Yeah. so it, it works that we don't see each other because yeah. um, I'm always trying to make levity out of the situation and Joseph's character is uh, very intense <laughs> <laughs> all right well then for the two I guess who've actually worked with him more how's it been yeah I had, I had an opportunity to work closely with Joseph at various points in the season. Um, he's, as Greg says, he's an incredibly skilled actor. Yeah. Um, amazing performer, but he's also down to earth and he's yeah. a really open collaborator. Mm -hmm. And creatively, it was just easy to work with him and, and to, uh, it's hard to talk about it without giving away <laughs> plot points, but- He's a uh, lovely human. Yeah. He is. He is, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But he brings, um, he brings a real gravitas, but also a, a vulnerability to Sebastian that uh, I think is a really nice counterpoint to Brother Blood, the villain. Sure. Yeah. I think one of the things that we really loved about him is, and I, and I think Josh just nailed it, he was able to play both Sebastian and Brother Blood. Mm -hmm. And Sebastian is somebody who's lived on the fringes of the world for many reasons, and unfairly so, um, and not understanding that there's a destiny. Mm -hmm. that he's, he's about to fulfill. And he's had a very hard time. He's felt unseen, he's felt um, mistreated, and hasn't really cast himself as a victim. He's just struggled, and like so many people we know. And so when he's actually found, discovered, that there's a mission, there's a prophecy, there's a, there's a destiny for him, yeah. watching that character evolve, Joseph's able to hit all those beats. Yeah. Okay, the last thing I will ask you is, how did you decide to set season four in Metropolis? Well, we wanted a real strict, uh, you know, a distinct contrast from Gotham. We'd been in San Francisco. Sure. We'd been a road show in season one. I know, you know, for the three of us you know, who were on season one, we liked the road show element of season one. We liked the chaos of that, uh, even though it was it was hard to shoot and we froze. <laughs> it was, or you froze. I was in a big coat. Um, it was. An I froze. In, yeah, visually. <laughs> way more interesting than being on a set. And we loved the San Francisco s stories, I did, but this was a different se uh, season. And we also wanted to contrast Gotham. You know, we had exercised all our demons in Gotham. Mm -hmm. We felt like we could now move on to a new world, but that means that with the new world become, comes new challenges. And Metropolis, outside, seems the exact opposite of Gotham. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it isn't haunted. It, it, it is a city of optimism, fundamental idealism. And, but underneath there lurks problems. Sure. Amazing. Well, thank you guys for stopping by. And everybody else, stay tuned to EW.com for all your New York Comic Con needs.